Hi friends, welcome to Harmony Hills Home and Garden. I'm Jenny and we're gardening here in Baltimore, Maryland, Zone 7. Today I am doing the fourth video in the series of our Front Foundation Refresh Project. And today is the day we're actually going to take some tools to the garden and get some work done. So come with me and let's see what we can do today. So I put together a plan in my last video, and so there are any number of projects that I could choose to do today. Um, it is only in the mid 80s Fahrenheit right now, but the humidity is through the roof. I am already glowing, I'll say, glistening, and adding to my glam rhinestone uh, tank top. So it is going to be a hot project, whatever I choose. So I think I'm gonna just I don't know, I could choose to work on cutting the new edge to the lawn. I could choose to start trying to dig out some of the hollies for transplanting. I could cut down and take out that laurel back there. Um, but instead of any of those projects, the other project that I'm going to do is I'm gonna start trimming these uh, lemon thread false cypress shrubs. We have two of these out here in the front one on each side of the sidewalk, and they give a little bit of formality, except right now they look a little bit shaggy, don't they? And um, these are about five years old and they have never been pruned at all. I've never cut anything off of them, except I did cut the top leader off of both of them this year because I don't want them any taller than they already are. Now, the best time to prune a lemon thread false cypress is not in late August, definitely not. Um, it's probably more like late March would be a better time. After the winter is over, you're not expecting any real hard, hard, hard freezes. Uh, you would trim them then, and then in the spring when the, uh, they become uh, active again after being dormant all winter, they would put out their fresh growth and have a lovely new soft outer coating of, of new um, foliage at that time. However, I know myself, and I know that if I'm working on a refresh, a reimagination of this front garden bed, I don't want to wait another six months before these look good to my eyes. So here's my thinking. I live in Zone 7, um, and I went back through our historical records of weather for the last three years. Now I know that that doesn't mean that it's going to be the same thing that happens this year, but for the last three years, we haven't had anything below 30 degrees until November. And so to me, that means I have September and October, which is a good eight weeks uh, before we're going to expect a freezing uh, night. And so I think eight weeks is enough time for these to be trimmed now and then put out some new growth and have that new growth be strong enough to withstand a freezing night in early November. That's what I'm hoping. That's what I'm counting on. I know I'm taking a risk by trimming right now. So if you are a, um, a risk intolerant kind of a gardener, this isn't the video for you to watch because I'm going to be taking a risk with these. But that's the kind of gardener I am. I'm impatient. I want things done now. And once I have an idea in my mind, it has to happen now or it never will. My tools for this job are pretty simple. I'm using a pair of garden shears and my hand pruners and some gloves. And that's about it. You could use electric hedgers, um, electric trimmers, if you have them. I actually do have a set of electric trimmers back there, hedge, hedge shears, but the battery isn't charged right now. And also, they're pretty old and maybe a little rusty. I'm not sure they do a great job. So this is what I'm using today. I also have a tarp that I'm gonna lay down on the ground to catch clippings. And I have this kind of um, waste receptacle bag which is really great for uh, moving branches and trimmings and things um, back to the backyard. And last but not least, I have my handkerchief, which I'm going to wrap around my head because I'm already dripping, and a hat to keep my hair from fading in the sun, mostly, but also to keep the sun out of my eyes. I feel a little bit like the Karate Kid. All right, it is not a beauty fashion statement, but I tell you what, this keeps the sweat out of my eyes. I am so much more comfortable when I wear a handkerchief around my head on a humid day. I'm not winning any fashion awards, but that's not what I'm here for. 
I want to put this warning in here, and that is that I am no expert on any of this. I'm basically a hack job um, in many regards, but I'm going to be just doing what I think feels right. If you are a better, more knowledgeable, better practiced, um, smarter gardener than me, please put your comments down in the comment section below and tell me what I'm doing wrong or what I'm doing right and also share your knowledge with other viewers so that I don't lead people too far astray. I'm going to start by uh, laying my tarp down, job one, and then I'm going to make the bottom circumference of the shrub the size that I want it to be and I will work on my cone shape after I have the bottom done. I'm just going to start cutting where I want the bottom of this to be. Oh, one more thing. When you're cutting false cypress, you do not want to cut all the way back to the woody, woody stems because they will not regrow from that. They have to have some fresh growth areas uh, in order to regrow. So take care not to take it down all the way to the um, bare branches because it won't recover from that. Some other types of evergreen shrubs will recover from that, like azaleas, hollies, laurels, but this style, no, you don't want to go all the way down to bare wood. nicer. I'm very happy with that. Oh, yeah. I've only done the front. I haven't done the back side yet. I think I'm going to go get another tarp so that I can do the front and the back at the same time and not have to move my tarp around. Okay, I have what I think is going to be the bottom circumference of the shrub. Now my task is to make it into a pyramid, kind of from the bottom up to the center point. This will be tricky because at the top it's a little bit bare, and I'm not sure it's going to fill out from that bare wood up there. So, also, I don't care about perfection. I'm going for something that's just more pleasing to the eye, something like a pyramid or a cone. If it's not perfect, that means it belongs in my garden because nothing here is perfect. So I'm going to just start working on the sides and see if I can make it into a nice shape. Okay, I think this is the shape I'm gonna give it. It's got somewhat of a rounded top. That's because there's two leaders in there and I didn't know which one to pick for the one to be the top. They're kind of right beside each other. So I'm just gonna let it have a rounded top and then as it grows, I'll make decisions about the top later. I like it. I think it is much more pleasing than the one across the sidewalk. That's how this one started. So yeah. I'm pleased with that. Now it's just a matter of letting this regrow, send out some nice new lacy foliage, 
and fingers crossed that that foliage doesn't get frost nipped in the cold weather to come. What a big improvement. I am so happy with this. Ah, uh, yes. Now I'm just gonna take a little bit of a break and then I'm gonna do the other one. make sure that I water in each of these shrubs really well because they are going to be under some stress now that they've lost quite a bit of their leaves um, and it, we're still expected to have some hot weather this week so I'm gonna give them a nice deep water. Well friends I'm hot, I'm itchy, but I'm oh so satisfied with the way these have turned out. I, don't, I wasn't sure how they would look, I wasn't sure if they would take the pruning okay with a good shape but I am really pleased with it. I've got them down to a manageable diameter. I've got them in a nice, pleasing teardrop shape. And um, I'm just really glad that I was able to get this project done. This is the official kickoff to really refreshing this front flower bed. So I'm grateful to have this project done today. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions for me, please put them in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear from you. I have really been enjoying the comments that have been coming in on the previous videos in this series. Keep them coming, friends. Keep them coming. Love to hear from you. I hope you have a wonderful day in your garden, and I hope that everything goes well for you in your garden spaces today. Have a wonderful day, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.